Warframe is full of mysteries, especially when it comes to how enemies scale their health and damage. So I did what any sane person would do. I tested it myself. A bit of theory, a lot of math, way too much pain, and of course, necros. Let's get into it. As usual in Warframe, when a Warframe levels up or you equip health increasing mods, your HP increases according to a simple formula. Current HP equals base HP times 1 plus percent from mods. Let's say Loki, his base HP of 280, so 280 times 1 plus 100 percent equals 560, right? It seems fair to guess that leveling up for enemies works like equipping additional vitality mods, but we don't know how much bonus HP they get per level. And what does this have to do with Necros? Let's find out together. Our test subject? The Elite Lancer. According to the Codex, this unit has 150 base HP at level 1. We'll test them on the Steel Path, where enemies get a 2.5x HP multiplier. So, the actual HP of a level 1 Elite Lancer on Steel Path is 150 times 2.5 equals 375 HP. Now, if our assumption is correct, then the general formula should look like to be shown in the screen, where X is the percentage bonus per level. All we need to do now is find X. To determine the actual HP of our Elite Lancers at different levels, we'll use Trinity's Energy Vampire. Its first pulse deals 6.25% of the target's max HP as true damage, ignoring armor. So by observing the damage from that first pulse, we can reverse engineer the enemy's max HP. Let's look at level 1. The first pulse does 23 damage. Divide that by 6.25%, and we get 368 HP. That's a 7 HP difference from 375, likely due to rounding. The game doesn't show damage numbers with decimals, so that's expected. This is also why we're testing on Steel Path. Enemies have more HP, so the rounding error is smaller, and our results are more accurate. After all that rambling, here's the result I've tested. Level 10 is 960, level 20 and 30 are 3264 and 7456. Lastly level 40 with 13648 HP. However, once we actually calculate the value of X, we quickly realize, it's not a constant. In other words, enemy HP doesn't scale like a single vitality mod. Instead, it increases more and more with each level. When we plot HP versus level on a graph, things get even stranger. The result? A curve, not a straight line, as we had optimistically expected. So, does that mean all our effort was wasted? Not exactly. In fact, this curve gives us a clue. Based on its shape, we can refine our hypothesis. Enemy HP likely follows either an exponential growth model or a power growth model. Both of these functions produce that classic curved shape, just like the one we observed in our data. From our original linear formula, we can now expand it into two potential models. We just need to plug in the values we've measured and solve a system of equations with two unknowns, x and y. And now, here it is. The final result. For Grenier enemies, health follows the above formula when enemies level below 70 and the below formula when enemies level above 80. And the gap between 70 and 80, DE are using smooth step function to connect. But of course, it doesn't stop there. Thanks to these two idiots, I started doubting everything I calculated. Turns out, DE really has a thing for messing with players. Why? Because these enemies don't start scaling their HP from level 1 like the others. For Bombard, health scaling only kicks in at level 4. And for tougher units like Heavy Gunners, they don't even start gaining HP until level 8. Using the same approach, we now move on to damage scaling. By simply standing there, face out, no dodging, no rolling, and letting them punch us in the teeth, we can reverse engineer how enemy damage increases with level. And the result? A clean formula, just like with health scaling. Painful? Yes. Scientific? Also yes. So after generously donating our health bar to science, here's what we found. But unlike health scaling, damage scaling has a twist. The formula? It gets doubled. Yep, yeah, twice the pain. Just when I thought I had it all figured out. DE pulled a fast one on me, again. However, maybe that's not such a bad thing after all. Because guess what? We're about to play Necros. And sometimes, the best way to deal with broken scaling, is to fight fire with fire. Or in this case, fight death with more death. Alright, theory time is over. 
Now they start giving these guys a taste of their own bullet. Summoner's Wrath already boosts our damage in a way that's similar to faction mods, and Roar falls into that same category. We're going with Total Eclipse instead. Necros's fourth ability, yeah, it casts painfully slow. So to fix that, we're slotting in three Tau Forged Casting Speed Shards. And for full armor strip? Two Corrosive Shards, done. No need to mess around with extra armor reduction setups. Just strip and summon. Clean, efficient, and deadly. As the two formulas we established earlier, purple line for health, blue line for damage, we can now observe something interesting. At around level 2700, the blue line finally cuts through the purple one. That's right, enemy damage officially outscales enemy health. And when that happens, Necros's fourth ability goes from decent to devastating. The math is clear, and now, so is their fate. 